I want to go into the actual mechanics of how I run the show and how I actually go, um, how I automated a lot of it. Um, now, a little caveat here. Okay, for probably about a year, year and a half, I was spending 15 to 20 grand a month on my content machine. But when I say that, people hear, I need to spend 15 to 20 grand on my content machine. I started with a $5 a month account at Libsyn for the first 120 episodes. Okay, yeah, that's totally fine. I'll tell you why they did this and the huge difference, but I was in a different spot. The most dangerous thing you could ever do is compare your entrepreneurial journey and the where you are in it with where someone else is. Okay, don't do that. It's you against you and it's you against yesterday, always. Okay, so don't think you have to do what I'm doing on these pieces and parts. I'm gonna teach you kind of a beginner model that I was going for. I'll also teach you more of the expert model that's more expensive also if you're further down the path, okay? Um, okay, so as far as show mechanics, I always choose one base platform. Now for a long time, it was iTunes. I would start with iTunes, I would create the iTunes thing, and then we would just put the cover on and play it as a video on YouTube. I got kind of weird. It was very hard it was around episode 120. I started, st I started with video. That's when I began using video as the base platform. And then we repurpose, we rip the audio, and now that's the iTunes, right? And then we take it and transcribe it, and that was the blog. And we take pictures and screenshots, now that was Instagram and Pinterest and other places. And, um, and that's, that's how it started. Every time I do it that way, much, much easier to do. But you have to understand that the platform itself is a preframe. Like I was saying yesterday a little bit, um, the platform, it is a preframe. If I watch a video, like imagine if you went and you saw, I mean, I had the cheesy Lord of the Rings theme yesterday, right? What if you listened to Lord of the Rings on the radio? Would that be as cool? Probably not, right? The platform matters. The way you consume it matters tremendously. And so you have to understand, like, there, there are several schools of thought on which platform you should go choose. I'm going to teach those to you in a moment. But understand the intent behind why the visitor is going to that platform in the first place. YouTube, why do people most go, uh, go, most go to YouTube? To learn. to learn how to stuff and also entertainment, right? I want to go get distracted. I want to have fun. I want to laugh. I want to find something. I want to be entertained in some fashion. And then the other side is like how-to stuff. A lot of how-to stuff around that. Um, the intent behind Facebook, why do people go to Facebook? Yeah, they want to get distracted, right? I mean, they did engineer dopamine straight into that, which is the chemical distraction, okay? iTunes, why does somebody go there? How-tos, multitasking. There's that really interesting uh, uh, study that was done about people who listen to podcasts. They found that m almost everyone who listens to podcasts is a six-figure earner. That's the other reason why I do it. Do you ever listen to a show and just that? I don't. I'm usually cleaning the garage, mowing the lawn doing chores, on the treadmill. You know what I mean? Usually it's an active individual who's doing things and wants to get something else done while they're also doing something else. That says a lot about that individual. That's very different intent behind someone who's going to Facebook, okay? That's why Facebook is not my base platform at all. In fact, only in the last year did we even start the Science of Selling Online, that group. Um, blog, usually bloggers, those are the engineers, those are the people that nitpick a lot of stuff. And, and that's, that's great, that's fine. But usually, uh, the people who go and they study the blogs and they read the blogs, those are the people, honestly, a lot of times who will um, ask me to validate the value of the bonus I just dropped, <laughs> right? Because they read into everything, literally, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's usually the intent behind the blog, which is great. That's totally fine. Um, I'm telling you this so you guys can see what platforms you want to go for. Okay, the platform is the pre-frame. The platform is its own kind of authority. I can say, take the same thing, say it in a different way, and there'll be less authority, less pre-frame. So that's why I choose video. Video is massive authority, absolutely huge. It is also much harder to do than just iTunes. Um, about the same time, Russell and I started doing more video podcasts, and it was rough. If you're like really, really, really nervous about running content and trying to do this, I don't personally recommend you start with video because you still have to find your voice. And then when you turn on a camera, you're speaking a whole nother language also. I'm not just saying the voice, now I'm entertaining the camera, right? Now I gotta be good at the movement. It's, it's way harder. In fact, for a while, I remember it was probably like 50 episodes after I started doing that, Russell sent me a message. He goes, dude, are you still doing the video? I said, yeah, it's way harder. He said, it's so much harder. He said, I'm going to take a break from it for a while. And he stopped and he went back to just iTunes for a while. That's why I did that. 
And so I was like, I gotta push through this. I'm gonna see if I can keep going on this. This is a lot more challenging. And it's not like my show is me at these crazy locations showing you, you know what I mean? It's, it's me talking, which means I need to be interesting to watch, not just listen to. So that's when I brought the whiteboard in and I started drawing and I started putting frameworks together and started putting, that way it was more interesting to view. I started making more of movements and whoa, boom, rah, rah, like I started making all this noise and crap. And uh, start, because I needed to entertain the eyes, not just the ears now. Okay, that was that, was, that shift was a, a very, very challenging. So if you are interested um, in video and if you're like, hey, I totally got this, that's awesome. If you're kind of nervous about this, I'll do the first like, do like 10 episodes on iTunes, start finding your voice there and, and kind of cut your teeth there because afterwards, uh, when you add that video element, it's, it's different. It's definitely different, okay? So the way you choose a platform, again, there's many schools of thought behind it. Um, and uh, Traffic Secrets talks about one uh, way. I like a certain way. Pink June has his way, which is, I mean, we're, all, we're all different on this. And uh, one of the ways to decide which platform you want as kind of a base platform to go after is just to ask, what platform pre-frame do I want? Do I want people who are coming with the intent to laugh? I should maybe start, let me go straight Instagram, interactive, engaging, show you the highlight reel of everything going on, be a jokester, kind of a reality TV show kind of thing, right? If that's your personality, you might be really, really good on the Instagram social media areas, right? If your personality is a little bit more, uh, Gary Vee said you need to be uh, beautiful, smart, or funny to make it on social media, <laughs> right? It's one of those things. So it's like, mm, well, clearly I have the beauty. Um, <laughs> and apparently the funny. <laughs> Just kidding. But I started thinking through though, like which platform matches my personality? I know me, I know that I'm having a hard, like I'm still learning the voice thing. I'm still like, oh man, I'm gonna start on iTunes. No one can see me. Uh, a lot of the episodes when I was just doing iTunes, my eyes were closed because I was focusing <laughs> on what I was doing. So I was recording at the mic and I was like, rah, 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 with my eyes closed. Um, and then I started like trying to learn how to move again on camera. Anyway, I'm just bringing this up so you guys can kind of like think through your personality and how you, how you want to do it. The other uh, school of thought is to think through where are my customers already? Right, it's very, uh, Peng Joon's very much about that. Meaning, let me go hit the keywords. Where are people heading? I'm going to put the content directly in front of them, which is great. And, uh, He's clearly found his voice. He's clearly an attractive character. He's further down the path, right? And so we actually are starting to do more of that. That's the reason we're shutting down Sales Funnel Radio. It's because we're going to relaunch with a very heavy keyword, let me get it far and fast and in front of as many people as possible kind of thing. I could not have pulled that off episode one, though. There's no way. I, I couldn't have handled it personally. The other one is, um, well, what, what I used to do is just ask people, like, who likes reading blogs in here? Congratulations, you're now a blogger. Right? <laughs> How many of you guys like to uh, watch videos? Me too, you're now a YouTuber, congratulations. <laughs> iTunes, who likes listening to my podcast? Sweet, y'all just started a show, a podcast show. That's what we used to do as well. Because consistency is the key. And you can adapt and you can adjust and you can go all over the place and as you start to move and flow. How many of you guys know you'd be a great social media um, um, uh, character? Awesome, yeah, yeah, great, sounds good, absolutely. Okay, um, anyway. So the major key with it though is just to make publishing part of the routine. So Tuesdays uh, for me has always been content day. Um, sometimes things get put in place with it or whatever, but uh, usually, so Tuesday morning, I get, how many of you guys have interviewed me on your shows? Oh, nice, cool. Okay, yeah. Tuesday morning, that's when I go and I will get on other people's shows. And then um, I usually try to say six weeks ahead on all content. That's been a little bit not true in the last like two months. It's been really busy, <laughs> but... Um, but usually I'm about six weeks ahead at all times content's been created because there's a lot of things we do with it and the teams need time to do it. Um, anyway, um, I definitely batch all my content though, but I don't do it for months at a time like I was saying. I have three tasks after each episode is recorded. Okay, these are the three things that I do to every episode, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced in this and you're gonna go super far and make a massive content machine. The first is I repurpose the content for more platforms. But the issue is that when I would just take iTunes and transcribe it and turn it into a blog and you're just reading the transcriptions, the transcription didn't really match the context of the platform, right? It's weird. It's like it was the transcription, but it wasn't really a blog post. It was just tra transcription. And so what I had to start doing, so first of all, I had to match the content to the context of the platform. 
You always do that for every platform you go for. That's the expensive part. Repurposing is cheap. It's super cheap to do that. I'll show you in a moment. The last part is that I syndicate and optimize, meaning I'm going to publish on a lot of platforms and then I'm going to turn back around and optimize it to go further on the platform. Okay, so those are the three things, regardless of what you're going to go do, will push the content very, very far. Those three things. Repurpose it for multiple platforms. Make the repurposing match the context of the platform. Then I multi-publish all over the place and optimize it so it goes further. I guess that's almost four steps. But, uh, so this is how I did it as a beginner. So how many of you guys are like just starting out? You're like, I know I'm going to publish, Stephen. The benefits are amazing. Thank you so much. I'm going to do this. Awesome. This is how I started, though. $5 a month with a Libsyn account, and I grabbed Russell's mic off his computer. But frankly, he just uses voice memos on his phone that comes with iTunes, or it comes with the apps, right? That's all he does on his phone. His, uh, his first 600 episodes were like that. So don't, don't get too, I always get people like, what kind of mic are you using? Who, are you publishing at all right now? No? Don't worry about it then. Just start publishing and then you get more into the nitty gritties of those things. That's fluff. What mic are you using? What camera are you using? Doesn't matter. How do you get your backdrop? You can Google that, all right? That's, that, that's anyway, that stuff doesn't matter for a very, very long time. Um, so first of all, what I did is I repurposed the content. So I would go early in his office, take his mic from his computer, and I would tell the whole episode. And again, you could tell I was reading on a few of them, but I would say the episode. Then I would go and uh, just an MP3. I would put my intro and my outro on and I would use uh, Adobe Audition. You can use GarageBand. There's a ton of softwares out there for it. I put my intro and my outro on there and I balance the audio so that my intro wasn't louder than the actual episode. Then I would go and I'd send it to Rev. Rev.com is a dollar per minute transcription. Temi is another one. It's not as accurate. It's done by a computer instead of a person, but it's 10 cents a minute. Um, Temi.com. Um, and now that I had the actual blog itself, um, I would go and, um, again, the audio, I'd put the intro and the outro on. I, the text, the transcription, I literally would just paste it straight into the WordPress blog. I had a lady build my blog for like 150 bucks in, I mean, freelancer.com. It right? does amazing things. I do, I do a lot on freelancer. Um, she built the blog itself, and I would just log in, make a new post, and press publish. <laughs> That's it. And uh, anyway, then I used Libsyn. Libsyn was cool because I could upload the episode, my podcast, tie, you know, a cover art, which I also got done by someone, I think, on Fiverr or Freelancer. Um, and uh, what's cool about Libsyn, anyone here use Libsyn or Podbean? Uh, Simplecast. Simplecast, great one. Um, yeah, there's a lot of them out there. But I was using Libsyn, which basically means when I push a button, it's gonna auto-publish to like 15 platforms in a single click, right? Syndication can take a long time. And there's people who will say, like um, uh, Julie Stoyan, she's super into not using syndication softwares, but I don't wanna spend the time. She's like, I organically published everything. I'm not gonna take the time to do that, uh, so I don't. Um, but this is my call, and there's, again, no right answer on this. Consistency is the right answer. Um, What's cool, though, is Libsyn would auto-publish to not just iTunes and the blogs and YouTube. It would go to all of, like, the sister platforms of those as well. So it was, like, going really deep on as many audio shows as it could. So it would go to Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, of course. It would go, go all these other... Anyways, it was really neat. And then they have a stats dashboard, which is nice, and most of them do now, so you can see how far the show is going and such. Um, you guys ready to see the expert mode? Yes. Yeah? Yes. How many of you guys currently have a show again or you consistently publish now? Cool, okay. It's about half of you, that's awesome. So you guys, I want, I want you guys to see this part of it. A lot of this comes from... So I had a few issues with this. I've had, I've had several iterations of my content machine. That's what I call it. Several iterations of the team itself. At first it was just me, and it was me and my sister, and then it was me and somebody else, and then... Um, and then I was like, you know what? What if I had like an agency that all they do is blogs? They're the ones that do the, do the blog. So then it goes really, and they're super deep into it. And I give them the keywords to go optimize for. What if I just had someone who just does the iTunes podcast, an agency for that? What if I just had a video agency, which is Marley. Uh, she's the one that did mine, mine for quite a while. Um, where they just do the video and they chop it all up and they optimize and they SEO it on YouTube itself. You know, what if I... And so it, I strung together all these agencies and tied them together with a Trello process. 
Okay, so that, that's, the benefit of that is that in a whole agency, there's a lot of people behind the people, behind the people. So if someone gets sick, it still gets done. And they have so much expertise in just the thing that that's what they do. They've thought through the process beyond what I had. So they're like, oh, are you gonna go do this? I'm like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know there's a thing. Solving more problems than I even knew were problems. That was the benefit. The negative, every time a project changes hands, costs go up dramatically. There's like a base fee and then the fee for actually doing the thing, right? And so that's why it got up to the 15 to 20 grand a month. And we're making way more than that with content. So it was worth it, but like it, it got very expensive very, very fast. Whereas before it was like, you know, 200 bucks an episode, <laughs> okay? Um, so I'm still gonna go through the same, same things. We're gonna repurpose the content, match the content to the platform, the context of the platform, syndicate and optimize. Um, now I use Google Drive as my home base for all the file management systems. And we create a folder for every episode. And we have under, under there two subfolders, raw, that's where I upload all the raw files for that episode, and then final. And that's where everyone in the teams uploads all their stuff. So by the end, there's just all these cool repurposed things. This is the one for Instagram. This is for iTunes. This is for YouTube. This is for the blog. This is for, it's like, so it's lots and lots of repurposing of just tons of epic content. And uh, then the repurposer, or sorry, the, uh, the optimi uh, sorry, syndicator, the final social media poster just logs into that folder and just shoots it to the right places. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, so Google Drive is what we've been using for all that stuff. Pros and cons to it. Um, also like Box. I like Box a lot. I don't really like Dropbox. I, like, I do like Box though. Um, anyway, so this is the machine. I'm gonna explain this. I know it's kind of tiny. I try to zoom in a bit. This is the board that I control all content with. So you'll see here, <coughs> everyone see me all right if I'm still just like right here explaining it, we good? The lights and all. Um, Okay, so on the left, those are all the episodes that are on deck, meaning I've done them, we just haven't started the work on them yet. Okay, the rule is there can only be one person assigned to a card at a time. I'll show you the actual card in a moment here. So I get to see at all times which agency is working on that episode. That's why that's big for me. As it gives me a snapshot of where we are in our content machine. Okay, now this is where I'm trying to always stay six weeks at least ahead on all my content. So when we were publishing twice a week on this show, right, this column was, was pretty big. It was at least 12 deep at all times. And if it was under 12, I would make up for that every Tuesday. Spent a lot of time doing this. <laughs> okay, when we, we slowed the show down because I wasn't ready to launch Pursuit of Profit yet. So we went down to one episode a week. And so now it's at the six or whatever. Um, I just took the screenshot like two or three I mean, it's gonna end at 300, so there's not much, <laughs> not much else to do after that. But what we do though is the in progress section, there's only ever allowed to be one episode at a time. I don't want this to be this massive convoluted thing. Um, so as far as the team and project management goes, I wanna see what the next episode is we're all working on right now. So that's episode, and that one is two, 297, which should go out today. <laughs> the 28th, that's what it says right there on that card. Should go out today. I think that one's called my first 17 tries. You guys will like it. Um, in the next column, the third column there, that's completed. So once they've done all the work, once the card has been completed, I'll show you the card, each individual card I'll show you in a moment here. Um, what's cool is each person is checking off the box, their agency is. One person in the agency has access to the card and they're coming and saying, okay, we did that, we did that, we did that, we did that, we did that. We uploaded, we assigned the card to the next agency. We did that, we did that, we did that, awesome. We uploaded all our stuff to the final folder. We assigned the card again to the next agency. At the very, very end, uh, the last person is the only person that has authority to move the card from in progress to completed. It's out, it's published, it's been syndicated and, and optimized, okay? Once that gets really, really big, I just go dump all those cards over to the far right, the archived completed episodes. So it's, that's a huge column <laughs> of all the content we put out. Uh, the next, the next uh, column there is assets. That's the assets that they typically need just routinely over and over and over again. Um, there's a Sales Funnel Radio episode template. Okay, that's what happens to every single episode. The outro. Okay, um, the iTunes link, the sales funnel intro, the sales funnel outro, all the passwords, the different platforms. We have them there for the teams in case someone loses something. Um, pics and videos. Here's how to publish episodes on Libsyn. I recorded a video of exactly how I want it done. I have a video for the publishing team who writes the, you know, the email that goes out that says, hey, new episodes come out. 
I don't write that, I don't publish it, I don't put it out there, I don't press send, I don't do any of that stuff. But I have a very specific video that I shot of how I want that done. So they log into my ClickFunnels account, write a teaser email, and blast it out to only two lists, Seinfeld and SalesFunnel Radio. Um, <coughs> affiliate links, anyway. Um, next, on the next, ep uh, next column over, I just have a column just called Future Episode Ideas. Um, that's one of my brainstorm spots. There's a lot I didn't get to say. <laughs> um, anyway, questions on this? We recently have switched to Monday.com because it's less breakable. This, I have to rely, not that any of them have done this, but I still, as, me personally as a project manager, as an owner, as someone who's spending 15 to 20 grand a month, I have to wonder if someone is not doing something in the process under the rules. And I can't lock them with those rules. Monday is very process driven. You can't drag and drop and move and all this stuff. So it's more locked. It's nicer for me because then I know it's, it's harder to break. Um, anyway, any questions about this? You guys are starting to get that glazed over look. This is a lot, all right? We are just starting. Go for it. Can you, can, I'm sorry, could you come to the mic? Is that all right? Yeah. We come to the mic for the questions. That'd be great. Sure. I'm just wondering, when did you start using Trello? I mean, you're talking about you're farther down the road than where I am. And so you've got teams of people. And I'm wondering, did you start using Trello when it was just you and a few people? Yeah, I yeah. started using Trello definitely in the beginner system I was just sharing with you guys. <clears throat> Probably by episode like 20 or 30. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Quick question on uh, publishing frequency. Could you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> like once a week, twice a week? Oh yeah, uh, whatever you feel like you can be consistent with, frankly. Um, some people want to publish daily, like this very, Peng Jun wants to do that, he publishes every single day. I just don't feel like I can be prolific that many times in a row. <laughs> so I don't, you know, and that's why I, uh, that's why I don't do that. Um, so whatever it is that you feel like you can be consistent with. Um, I would start, if you've never done this, with one episode or one show or whatever per week. So one of the things I'm working with is integrating the content machine with the CRM as well, because I use content as a lead, as a lead gen strategy directly with guests. So nice. I'm curious if you, have, if you have any suggestions in terms of like how, like if, there's, if those are just two separate systems or how you'd integrate those two. What are you trying to solve? Just I, because I'm building out my team, just the communication and making sure that people don't fall through the cracks mm -hmm. as we're because we just have a lot of, we're backlogged with a lot of content, which is a great blessing, but I just want to make sure that like people don't get lost in the process of, of publishing. You mean like the episodes themselves? The episodes, the, and then the, like the follow-up and contacts with, with oh. like the guests, because I do a lot of interviewing. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, the way interviews run for me is, I am, actually I'm going to go into that, and it should answer some of that for you. Yeah, that's cool. the next part here, yeah. So my question is that, could you explain more about the workflow? Is, is there any like I'm project manager? Going there, yeah, very next part here, yeah. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. Yep. Okay, here it is. <laughs> okay. It sucks it says agency and all this. Okay, so what I, oh, uh, what I used, actually it won't in a moment. All right, so this is what happens to every episode. This is one episode. So first of all, I am responsible. Please silence all cell phones. <laughs> um, I'm responsible for the things up here in the top. Okay, so I'm going to come up with a headline, and we say a very specific format. I decided to say SFR number, whatever, colon, and then I put the headline with dot dot dot. That's the format I want every episode to be published as. That just made that call. There's nothing, no strategy behind that. Um, Subheadline. That's where I come up with the subheadline material. Then I have the outro. Now I have a huge. I'll show you guys also outros in just a moment here. Um, but I have a huge list of outros, and I make outros a lot. And I'll share with you guys more of that in a moment. But I'm telling them which one I want the outro to be there. Then I'd say uh, we always try to have the content done and ready to publish 24 hours before it's time to actually publish it. Uh, the issue we are running into is that people at the tail end of the process were having to hustle every episode because the first person may not have gotten the stuff done 24 hours in advance. So everyone needed to be done 24 hours ahead of time. So that solved that problem for us. Um, <clears throat> all episodes are going to be published on this day, this time, Mountain Standard Time, 
We publish to every single platform at the same time in order to kind of blitz the internet and all the algorithms. Boom, all platforms, one shot. So we all time it to the minute. <laughs> Boosh, and it blasts out there. Um, then I say, here's the Google Drive episode folder link, and I paste that in up there at the top as well. Um, and uh, these others are for other people. I also come up with like an Instagram quote so that they can put on a quote card with like some screenshot of me in the episode. Um, so they can go put that out there. My checklist in order to get this stuff done. So this is how the process starts. It's so tiny, I'm so sorry. The, the way this starts here, in fact, let me go back, there we go. Um, these are all the agencies. That's what I'm trying to say here. Boom, 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 boom. There's a lot of agencies involved with it. Um, so this is, it's still kind of, anyways, but here we go. So first what I do is I record the episode. I upload it to the, to the, uh, the Google folder for that specific episode that we created. I name the file the episode name. So it's not just like some random name. I actually name it. That way it's easy for the teams to go find it. So whatever that episode title is gonna be, I take that and that's the actual file name when I upload it. I make a Trello card um, and uh, in order to tell Austin that it's ready for him to upload to the rest of the teams. And uh, anyway, he goes and he does all this uploading. Anyway, this is really where it starts though, Daxi. Daxi in the bottom left, you guys know Daxi? Legacy Podcasting? Amazing, great, great, uh, great company. Um, he started with me before he was like an agency doing all this stuff and we were, I was having him do a lot of audio and then he got really into it and I was like, you should make like an agency about this. So it's cool, he's taken to it and he's exploded. Um, so he goes and he downloads the video and removes the actual audio file and then he puts the intro and outro on and levels it so that it actually sounds like even volume and sound. Um, and then he, they'll go in, they do all kinds of stuff to it now, which is awesome. Um, then he assigns the card or episode to Marley. Okay, Marley's the next one up there in the top right there. Okay, Marley goes and she uploads again. So we actually upload to transcription services twice. The first is so that the blogger who's way in the back, right, has time to be working on it while everyone else is doing their stuff. The blog is the part that takes the longest in the whole process. So what used to happen is we wouldn't give our blogger the actual material <laughs> for a while. And then we're like, hey, we're publishing in 24 hours. And she'd be like, oh my gosh, you speak like 30,000 words an episode, dude. Like, this is big. <laughs> I was like, oh crap, we gotta fix this a little bit. So we actually first do a, tra we do a rev uh, transcription very quickly in order to get her the material quick. Um, but then uh, Marley does it again for YouTube. YouTube lets you SEO pretty hard now, which is awesome, um, uh, through multiple ways. So she does it again, specific just for the YouTube uh, platform itself. Um, then she goes in and she chops out like 15 second versions for Instagram. Um, she chops out 30 second versions for um, YouTube. She chops out, so one video will get repurposed to like a ton, like, all over the place so that we can put it in a lot of places. They do a lot of stuff for, they take screenshots that later the social media people will use for Instagram to make quote cards out of. We get a lot from the video. <laughs> Can we keep going on the depth of this? <laughs> it's just, okay. Uh, it's a lot. Um, it took me a while to create this machine, uh, about 300 episodes. <laughs> um, anyway, um, we've been running this, this version of the machine for probably 120 episodes now. Um, anyway, so they go and they upload to YouTube, but they don't publish. And that's cool because they can start to see how it's gonna rank in YouTube. So they start doing things to it before we actually publish it to make sure it goes further. Um, they will then go and take like a minute teaser version for Facebook so we can post it to announce the episode. Um, <coughs> let me read it here so it's easier to see here. Um, they take the YouTube description from the Trello card. Um, sorry, they take the Trello card description and that's what they put inside the YouTube description we getting in the weeds here, you guys all right? Is it good, keep going, all right. All right, Whew. they do a ton. Then they take all those assets and they go and they upload it to the final folder inside Google Drive. Right, that's where everything goes. Each episode has its own uh, folder itself. Um, Helen, Helen Henley, anyone know her? No, a few people, she's awesome, super cool. She's, uh, she's been a, my blogger for Sales Funnel Radio for a long time, long time. Um, she goes in and she's had the, now the rev transcription for quite a while. And basically 
what she does is she takes the transcription and makes it a blog. So she watches what I'm saying and she, try, she, she probably knows my stuff. There's like two people. The other one's probably Ashley Gaynor. I know she's here. Where are you? Yeah! Ashley's also gone through probably every single thing that has ever come out of my mouth, ever. <laughs> okay? Helen's the other one. Okay? It's those two, that's it. Um, hey, thanks. Appreciate it. Um, so anyway, they go through and they turn the transcription into a blog. So it's easily digestible for blog lovers and blog, re- blog readers. I don't put tons of emphasis on the blog part for me because most of my audience is not, is not reading that. Um, but uh, it's still the, the reason I still include it as part of my content machine is because the ranking is huge on all the platforms, right? It's, it's only recent that audio is now getting SEO'd. You know what I mean? That's a new thing that's coming out. You guys know that? Like when you say stuff, it doesn't need to be transcribed with keywords and all stuff anymore. It can hear you and figure out what you're saying and then rank you on that now. That's, that's like new in the last few months. Um, so instead, what I've been doing is pairing the blog and pairing copy and text with the videos, with the audio, in order to help rank and boost and push it out there. Now, um, that's going to be a less, I mean, we'll still always, we'll always have a blog, um, but uh, it's not as dependent on the blog for ranking as much anymore. Um, so Helen goes through, she adds images to the blog, she adds the links, she adds SEO, metadata, the descriptions, she adds page titles, she um, some really cool softwares out there that will show you what your content is most likely to, how it's likely to perform on Google with ranking, so you can make changes before you publish, which is really cool. Um, Julia does a lot of that. She's the one in the top right now. Julia gets tagged, and she's the one that takes the blog and actually puts it in WordPress. Okay, Helen writes the blog. Julia puts it in the blog, okay? And she's the one that puts it in, and she, I mean, now that all the metadata and the tags, she's, she really does a lot more optimizing of the blog itself. Um, she's also the one that reads it, listens to it, and creates a teaser email of the highlights of the story, puts it in to my ClickFunnels account, and then she goes in and she blasts out the email. She's the one that does the email with the quote cards and all that stuff. Um, I call it beauti- beautify. It's like, go beautify it. <laughs> so she goes out and beautifies. She takes a lot of stuff that Marley has created, puts that back in the blog as well. Uh, we will go in and, anyone who use Pat, Pat Flynn's smart podcast player? They just reached out asking if they can feature me on this stuff. It's cool. Uh, last night. Anyone, anyone Pat Flynn follower? Yeah. Okay, cool. He's the guy that got me on the internet, by the way. And I've been trying to get him on sales phone radio for a long time. Um, that's why I joined the mastermind he's going to be in, so I can go shake his hand and get him on the show. <laughs> Dream 100, baby. <laughs> um, anyway, but we use his smart podcast player after the blog's posted. We put that back into the blog with the live active link so that they can listen to it while they're reading it, which is cool. Then Emily gets tagged in the episode. We're still on one episode. <laughs> Emily gets tagged. She is the one kind of like middle right there. Emily goes in and she is the social media distributor slash optimizer. So she's the one that's actually doing the posting in the group, on my Facebook, in Instagram. She's making all the posts there. She's making all the stories there. Um, they'll do a chatbot blast. They'll do, there's a lot of stuff. That, it's just Instagram TV. Um, she plays the episode live through restream.io, through lots of pages. That's how we're doing that. You guys ever seen this when we do that? Yeah. It's like, you're live right now. And I'll be like, on the cruise, <laughs> right? And it's got like a cool intro and outro, restream.io, amazing software, amazing software. That's how when I was live doing like those seven day launches, I was also live on other platforms. I was actually live, but I was also streaming it live as if I was live to tons of other platforms. Very powerful. Um, so across tons, we'd have a collective, lots of people, you know, um, all watching. And then, uh, you know, Colton Austin and I would be moderating all the comments and chatting. Uh, But Emily goes in, she's the one that fills out the social media tabs, the artwork, she uploads it to Libsyn that blasts all over the place. Then she goes to all her social media profiles and hits it again or optimizes it, uh, puts the podcast players in different posts, schedules the posts in the groups, adds the 15 second Instagram videos that Marley created back in the YouTube section. She goes and grabs that from the final folder, puts it in Instagram. Um, Anyways, it's, it's big. And by the end, what we actually have is we have the ads team come on in and look at it and say, that would be a great episode, but that would not be a great episode for ads. Okay, so they're gonna go look at it. Now that we've created all this stuff, I'm gonna go use that as a pre-frame for whatever the call to action was for that episode. 
Like let's say it was for Offermind, which happened several times. And instead of them driving traffic to the page, they drive traffic to the content, which then drove them to the page, right? Drove them to the funnel. Um, that, that was big. <sighs> you guys good? <laughs> it was a lot. So, what's that? It's a lot, yeah, it's a lot. Um, it didn't start this way. It's like 130 steps per episode that we go and we do. That's why it's 15 grand a month. I've had people ask like, why are you spending that much on content? Like, well, because most of my revenue comes from it and I'm an idiot to not. Um, second of all, it changes hands a lot. And there's agency base fees and stuff with every single one of them. So one of the things we'll be doing soon is we're actually gonna move back to just a single agency and I've taught them this instead and they're gonna be doing this whole thing. It'll cut my cost probably in half. Um, but still, good. I mean, per show, like One Funnel Away Stories costs eight grand to run. Just with no ads, just to run, just to put the whole show out there. Um, the rest of them are gonna be around that as well now. But it's crazy how much revenue comes from content. Um, so it'd be dumb to not do it. So we have, um, we have in here, uh, anyone ever read the book, The Goal? Yeah, big, thick, awesome book. Operations management. It uses a factory as a illustration on how to create processes. And one of the greatest stories in that book for me was the story of this guy. He's going out and he's taking all these scouts on a hike. And the scouts, how many of you guys have ever been backpacking? I did a ton of backpacking growing up. I was a group in Colorado. We went on a three week backpacking trip once around the Continental Divide, and it was really cool. And um, this same thing happened that he's describing in the book. We'd be walking around, walking around, you know, going up there, trails and up the mountains, way above tree lines, and it's super fun. And, and uh, you know, get your pack on and everything. And, and the person in the front would usually be walking just at like a normal pace, okay? The next person, there'd be a little bit of space. The next person would be walking behind them. And every once in a while, the space would get a little bit bigger and they would, they'd, 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 they'd what? They'd speed up just a little bit, right? To kind of catch up and close that gap and then go back to the same pace. But now there's a little bit of distance between the second and the third that's also starting to fluctuate, right? And the gap gets bigger faster. And so this third person over here, this is what created this, okay? This third person over here, there's an extra amount of space and it means the person in the middle, that's only number three now, every once in a while is kind of having to do a little half jog just to catch up and close the gap. What does that mean for person 10? Okay? Processes are a series of dependent events. And so as I started thinking about the issues inside of my own content machine and the agency I'd created, what was happening sometimes is, and this is why we had to move a lot of stuff with where the blogger fit, because the blogger took a lot of time to go, understandably, go through 30,000 words, okay? Um, and what was happening is she was at the very tail end of the process and it was just murdering her. So everyone else was going around and just, you know, walk in and they'd speed up every once in a while if they kind of got behind on the content machine. And the person in the back is usually running the whole time and wondering why the person at the front is running. They're walking. Isn't it interesting? Wow. So process management is a huge piece of this. And that's why I say CEOs are in the business of systems. I've had to learn this in order to grow. And so Systems, I'm, I'm a process is junky now and everything we do has a process behind it, but it's under this context to know that I cannot move forward until they move forward, but they can't move forward until they move forward and they can't move forward and so forth. But the gap between them and how things fluctuate back and forth can destroy the tail people. It can destroy them. And after a while, I mean, I've had, pe I've had a few, sometimes I've had people on my team message me just bawling. I can't keep up with the pace, this is crazy, oh my gosh. And they're legitimately, like, they're hurt. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. I'm so sorry, the rest of us are walking, <laughs> right? And it wasn't until I realized everyone's a series of dependent events, especially when you're in a process. So like OfferLab, that's why OfferLab's such a big deal, is because no one has invented a fulfillment process that can handle that. And it's, I'm a process as nerd. And it's by understanding, this is one of, those, one of the principles that's done that. How can we tie together agencies in a manner that doesn't murder the tail in person, that still has high quality, and there's communication throughout that everyone knows what's going on, okay? You gotta become somewhat interested in processes if you're gonna build a business. If you're not, you gotta find someone who's going to. Because you can't just build a funnel and not have the business, right? Won't, you won't fulfill. 
Okay, so I did the same thing though with the content machine. This is probably the fourth iteration of it. This was the final like 120 episodes. It was also the final probably 50 episodes of Secret MLMX Radio. And it was under this. And I, what I do is I have, this is the template card. And every time we go and we do a new episode, we clone the template card. I'm the only one that's allowed to touch it. And we treat this like the Bible, okay? Nothing happens outside of this card. And so if something is happening, so what I do then, this is how I create processes. You right if I go into this a little? This is how I create processes. I believe, how many of you guys are having success in the thing that you're doing right now? Any amount. You already have a process or you would not be successful. You don't create process, you capture process. And so I'm not gonna go in and say, Marley, this is what I want you to do, person who has more expertise in video than I do. That makes no sense. She has more expertise than I do. So when I, every time I go and I bring somebody into an agency or I go and I pull somebody, I interview them and I say, take me through your process. And I always have Trello or Monday or whatever, some process management tool open and I will think through and I'm writing as they're talking. Then what do you do? 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 Sweet, we now have the process. And this is what I want you to do, everything you just said. And then I keep very, very fluid with it. It took me probably three months to really, really dial in the process behind these episodes um, of actively participating in changing the master, changing the master template. And I would go back and I'd interview and I'd be like, okay, now what issues do you have? Okay, please, please make fun of this. Make fun of it. What's wrong? Because sometimes they want to, you know, you're paying them. So they'd be, you know, they wouldn't sell me the total truth. So I'd be like, what's the issue? Like, well, it'd be really nice if, first of all, if Marley could re-upload to Rev for the specific purpose of, of YouTube, but we could also do it so I could get the blog earlier. They came up with that, not me, I captured it. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and uh, every single one of these agencies, or if you have individuals or not, or whatever it is, what I do is I capture the process and then I just destroy the process over and over and over and over and over. And now I know if I hired anybody else or if I lost somebody or if someone got sick or whatever, we still, we still can run. I can hand, I literally can plug somebody into that in, in their place. That's how, that's how it works. So now that we have the process, it's cool. Each of these people I've been using for quite a long time now and each individual person's business has exploded and grown and been massive and now I'm the guy they're making the exception for and in their business. They're not doing it for anybody else. I'm like, well, we've all got evolved and grown. It's been great, it's been fun, been cool. We got a killer process. Let's just teach one agency that and everyone can go do the other real businesses they're actually all in now. <laughs> Make sense? But because of that and this group effort, I didn't know, I mean, I'm, I'm not amazing. I hate social media sometimes, even still, right? But Emily's a social media queen. She's amazing at it. She helped me develop and create a process throughout that made it easier on her team to fulfill, made it better for the episodes to go further, and now it's a template and a stamp I can go take other places. I do the same thing for funnel building. I do the same, because I'm not the one building my funnels anymore, but I have a very aggressive process behind it. It's the only reason Offer Lab can work. People usually can't build one funnel. We're cranking 30 to 50 a month, right? So it's because of this and because of how we tied all these pieces together. We can handle 30 to 50 a month is the capacity we built it for. So, <coughs> totally custom, which is awesome. So does that make sense? You're gonna become, if you're a marketer, awesome. You're gonna bring revenue in, but you gotta build the business systems. If you're not gonna be the one to do that, that's fine, but someone needs to. Russell, not a business systems guy, right? Brings in Brent, brings in other people to go and build the process around it. I'm highly process driven. I built a lot of processes around what, what he was doing. I speak marketer, oh, 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 and he'd be like, oh, 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 right? That's our language. <laughs> and then we go around. <laughs> he sent me a Vox once. He's like, dude, you came in. And that's, that's what he said. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, oh. And you were like, oh, oh, and you understood it. He's like, you need to be the translator for me sometimes. I was like, all right, cool. So we went in and we created things around him for that. Anyway, process is always greater than talent. Okay. Whew. What questions do you have? Yeah, you came up to the mic here, be awesome. Can you share that uh, Trello template? Yeah. It's part of the contentmachine.com. Okay. Come on, I'm filming the material for something. <laughs> There's always purposes, we have purposes. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, that's the expert mode. Start at the beginner where it's just you and a Libsyn account for five bucks. Just that. I'm just, that's what I did. 
Hey, Steve, got a question. Um, you said when you put the video uh, up before it gets launched live onto uh, YouTube, you'll see, you can see how it actually ranks before it goes live. Yeah, there's a really cool tool with um, YouTube called VidIQ. VidIQ? It's free. It's amazing. It will show you how YouTube will likely rank it once you publish it. And you can even live rank after it's published. It's ridiculous. Live now, rank. that's why I go type in Russell Brunson. I think I'm video three now. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Thanks. I was just wondering how you measure your revenue from your content. We don't run a lot of ads. Where does it come from? <laughs> you know what I mean? It comes from the list that gets generated from everything else. Competition, competitive versus complementary. Yeah. What does the show growth look like for both? Do they both just go right out of the gate, or is one slower? It's a great question. We'll actually talk about that in a moment. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, is the, if when you're going from the beginner to that, and you're trying to, you know, and the, um, are you, is there like one, how would you step it? Like, would you choose one agency to start doing something, or how do you go from A to Z? Yeah, what I really, it's a great question. Good to see you, by the way. Um, it's a great question. What I did is I, I, I don't start with that level of detail. I start with the agencies. Well, really, what I did is I said, okay, first I'm going to start with a video, and then let's get it transcribed. So it goes to a blog. We also need it sent to iTunes for like an MP3. And then I just, I've just thought through conceptually just the high level processes. And then the question was, well, who, not the how, right? Who can I get to go do that? And then I went into and found an agency just on that, just on that, just on that, and captured their process. It's way easier. It looks insane. But to each agency, they only have like 15 steps. Together, it's ridiculous. But it's not that crazy. Yeah. Uh, is it okay if we share like a, a story? Yeah, like, totally. So we struggle big time with that especially. So we're selling content to other companies and we were not doing it ourselves. So we're like, we have to do this. So internally we did a 45 live challenge on Facebook. Nice. And the only thing was Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. And uh, we did it, we didn't even complete the 45 days. We did it for like 25. And it exponentially grew what we did, the network, and we call it collateral revenue. It came from conversations cool. from that, that cool. content. Um, so I hope this motivates you guys. Just put yourself out there. And it's no editing whatsoever. It's like Facebook Live, download, go to LinkedIn, and that's it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, keep it simple. Whatever your machine is, I got a big one, but doesn't, the machine doesn't need to be huge to be effective. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hi. Um, so you talked about uh, testing your material, Russell, Russell tests on stage, you're testing on stage. Um, one of the questions I have is, uh, should I be thinking about going live to test material before it goes into a podcast, or am I just complicating the process? No, you're not at all. In fact, how many, I mean, you guys see several of my episodes are just repurposes of lives that went really, really well, you know. Um, if you got a cool idea, um, <laughs> It's cool. I, when I was sitting next to Russell, I, I would keep track of the cool things he would say on a big Trello board. Austin's been doing the same. I didn't know that. He's like, you said something super cool. He said, he said once you, 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 you stood up and said, ideas, when shared, grow. And uh, so that's, that's why I do it. When I have a cool idea, I'm just going to share it. If it's on an Instagram for 15 seconds or it's a Facebook Live, what I'm trying to see is if it grows. And if it grows and it gets bigger, then I'll go and repurpose that and kind of just like dive into it a little bit. But yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh -huh. So that was solid gold. Thank you so much. You. I just started a, a podcast. And so all of that was just so, so helpful. Oh, nice. Are you still doing interviews? I am. We'll actually talk about that in a moment. Okay. Because I, yeah. I go on your website to try and, and yeah, watch that video. Right and it's blocked. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank oh, you. you know, I did have a question. What is the, the system that the blog brings the blogs? I know vidIQ, but you said you're one of your guys. SEO presser. SEO presser. Okay, thanks. SEO presser. There's a lot. That's the one we use for a long time. Hey, hey Stephen. Uh, hey. Great stuff, man. Thank you. Hey, listen, I'm a content freak, junkie. Woo. Create massive amounts of content. I have a whole lot of stuff that's just sitting there. I create so much content that's just sitting there. I want to get from where I am to where you are. Sure. What's the first thing that I need to do, and who's the first person that I need to hire? Sure. Um, I would go in and... You know, once you have the who and the mar once there's a marketing purpose behind all of it, which I'm sure there already is if you're doing it, 
I would just sit down and do exactly what, what we were talking about, is just start walking through, well, first I want my content to go here, and then here, and then here. I'm not on Pinterest, because I don't really want to be on Pinterest. You know what I mean? Like, map out the platforms you want to be on, in, and then just kind of put them in an order. And then it's easy to just start finding people who are, hey, who's this expert? Who's this expert? Who's this expert? Because I've been kind of like, uh, I don't know, I've been cut too general in what I think I need. I said, I need a person to help me manage my content, but I'm not sure what kind of person... You know, whether it needs to be a person, an agency, I don't know. Is there a platform you're making your home base? I've made it uh, Facebook with my ads so far. Sure. It's, it's helping me out. Um, I'm, I just, you know, after your presentation today, I'm understanding more that YouTube is more about how to. And so I have a lot of videos like that, too, that I can put yeah. up there that are sitting there. And uh, so. I love Facebook for a lot of the things that it does. The only issue I have with it, I don't ever make it my base platform ever. And the reason is because feeds, right? They just disappear. Yeah. So I make things like YouTube and iTunes and blogs one of the bases always. And I'll still post to Facebook, but after like two hours, it's pretty much gone if someone didn't actually check it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I do recommend that for everyone who's here to choose one of those, like YouTube grows over time. Facebook does the exact opposite, right? Um, so yeah, I would, I would choose a base platform that sticks around and lets you kind of plant seeds that'll grow over time. And then just think through what the process is for you, what, what order you want to hit what platform, and then uh, go interview those agencies, capture the process, and then like, oh, now I got a Trello card. That's how I would do it. Okay. Yeah. Just um, one last quick one. Okay. Um, about choosing, a, maybe I, this might be helpful for others too, about choosing an agency. I've been... I've chosen the agencies, fired or hired them, fired them, because they, they, they say they know what they do, but they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So. Uh, what's cool about this is I, this is exactly what I want them to do. I mean, I'm so clear on this, on what I want them to do. There's a format for the headline. There's a format for how they're supposed to, I, it looks over controlish and kind of freakish or whatever, but really it helps them know how to win in my eyes. Because most people don't know how to do that, right? You, you gotta help them know how to win in your eyes and the best thing you can do is go very, very granular, exactly this is what I want, and put that in the process that you treat like the Bible. And um, that's, that's how I've been able to get a lot of agencies who are not related at all to behave how I need them. Okay, thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. All righty, just looking forward here. We are going to go into, oh, thanks. All right. Cool. So if content is all about a marketing purpose and not just content, I wanted to be able to go and do marketing things, right? I needed to go create a list. And so I came up with kind of a, um, anyone follow Frank Kern way back in the day when he was still like a hippie? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> He had these really cool courses I was listening to and, and he talked all about lists and list management. And yeah, I think he's the first person I actually heard the Seinfeld sequence from and soap opera sequence from. He's really, really into that and upselling throughout an email sequence. He's really into that. And so I was like, well, what if we take that process and we also add together, I was like, what if I added in together the principle of a squeeze and capture page and such and we kind of combine them. So I kind of made up this funnel when I was in college and it worked really, really well. Um, uh, the publishing funnel. Anyone watch me build this on a Saturday build? Nice, yeah, you were there, Ben. Oh, what's up? Yeah, you guys have been around for a long time. It's awesome. So this is the publishing funnel, and it worked really, really well because what I wanted to do is in my outros, I wanted to be able to describe, hey, go to suchandsuch.com or go to salesfunnelradio.com or whatever, secretemilywaxradio.com. In fact, secret the, the, home, the show.com page is this funnel. And it actually will be the same thing on onefunnelawaystories.com as soon as we're finished with it. Uh, but this is what it'll be, okay? Now, um, how many parts are there to a webinar or presentation? It's five, right? It's five. Origin story, secret one, two, three, and then the pitch, right? Now I like to add another closes and follow up and you see how many sub pieces of content are there on the right. They're literally sideways consuming a presentation. Okay, so what happens is somebody comes on in and I have review.com, like you wanna review the show? Boom, you want to uh, listen? You want this free thing? You wanna get interviewed on the show? You wanna uh, apply for that? I use it as a home page, kind of a home base. It's not really a funnel. This is more of a website because there's more than one exit. Okay, funnels have one exit. 
forward or close the page, <laughs> right? So this is a little bit more, but I've turned it a little bit more funnel-esque. And so I'm pitching still, and before they scroll down, the top third of the page is all a pitch for some free thing. So they click there, and uh, it, the pop-up comes up and says, hey, download this cool free thing, right? It adds them to the list. And over the next few days, I'm gonna drip out to them an email, right? Uh, here's the free thing. Here's my origin story, secret one, secret two, secret three. Here's the offer, and here's like follow-up and stuff. But it's going to a specific page where I'm pitching them on the next thing in the value ladder. You guys remember the value ladder? The middle's about business systems, top's about you being, being paid out, the bottom is about leads and noise, but the real bottom is about relationships. This is where I'm selling them on me, not my products, nothing else, me. My story, my journey, hey, this guy's got huge eyes, but he's all right, right? <laughs> right? And so that's what I'm doing in here, is I'm pitching them throughout. This is value ladder education. This is the journey I've been on. This is how far I've come, and what I'm doing uh, uh, throughout this is origin story, next one, secret one, secret two, secret three, right? The pitch and then a recap with uh, more closes and scarcity urgency. Then there's, a, this is actually very similar to the format we use for all affiliate, all commission-based uh, funnels as well. Um, but this is how I capture and create a list. So when I was launching the Secret Emblem Hacks product, I, I only had this and 50 episodes that I'd done, that was all. And what was cool about that is I had been talking about it, I had been seeding the fact that something was coming. I had no idea what it was, I was gonna let the market guide me. But, I st I, but it was coming, I needed to sell something and knew, I, knew we had some value to provide. So we had 400 people on the waiting list for the product before I knew what it was. <laughs> we had 2,000 people on the Seinfeld list before I had a product that sold them anything um, because of this. So when you match a funnel with the power of content, content fuels funnels, so I still want a funnel. In fact, there's a lot of people who will say, unless you have a funnel, maybe you shouldn't be publishing yet. That's like the only caveat I kind of agree with where if you have, like, it's better to publish than not. But for, as a marketer, they need to land somewhere. You're not just making noise. You gotta have the land, noise land somewhere. So we would go in, and this very simple funnel. Um, the origin story was uh, right there at the top. Um, why are you doing this, right? If you guys wanna see a live example, this is secretmlmaxradio.com. Um, OneFunnelWayStories.com, not quite there as the time of us creating this now, um, but uh, we'll be there soon, it'll be in this format. And when they download the free goodie or whatever, on the second page, the second page, you can use something like UpViral or Gleam.io, and they get rewarded for sharing on social media your show. So I have other bonuses and other unlocks and things like that. That's been very, very powerful. We've had tens of thousands of shares and referred traffic coming to these pages because of that. And then people are going through secret one, secret two, secret three. They're going through my presentation while I kind of go through and frankly pitch them on the next thing in the value ladder. Makes sense? This is, how I, this is one of the ways I tie in a marketing purpose with the show itself. Uh, yeah? When you're walking them through secret one, secret two, secret three, is that all happening through the email series that's then pushing them to your sideways webinar pages? Or how, how is that? Yeah, so um, it's actually happening. So the question is, where is the actual walking through Secret 1, Secret 2, Secret 3? Where is that happening? Um, what's the purpose of an email subject line? Open email. To open the email. That's it. What's the purpose of the body of the email? To get them to click. Not sell the thing on the next page. Only to sell the click to get them to the page. What's the purpose of the video on the page? Get them to the click. One of the biggest mistakes people make in funnels is they're selling the steps that are two or three steps ahead. You always only sell the next step ahead in a funnel, okay, always. And so what I'm doing is the email that I'm sending them is a teaser for the video because I want them to click to go to it. What's the video? A teaser for what I want them to go buy next in the value ladder. All pages, all funnels, every funnelology that's, that's, uh, is, is like that. It's a great question, thank you. Um, okay. You guys good? I have 30 minutes and two sections. Yes. Quick question. Yeah. Just to clarify, we have our core offer with our, our main landing page. Yeah. This is so cool. But this publishing funnel is like the name of our show.com or whatever. Right. Tie that back together, how those relate to each other. For example, absolutely. So this is, uh, this is different, right? You have your core offer and the funnel that sells that. This is a different funnel. What would I be trying to push them to in the publishing funnel? 
core offer, right? I'm the next thing in the value ladder. And if you're starting at the middle, which is smart in my opinion, you're gonna be pushing them to the next thing in your core offer. So that's exactly what I did. For a long time, the only thing that we had for the MLM side that we were doing things in was uh, the core offer, secretmlmhacks.com, and then secretmlmhacksradio.com, and everything pushed back up to that. And we went back and we started seeing that like probably at least half of our purchases for a long time were just coming from the show. Fueled everything, just paid for the machines, let me get the content machine uh, moving, and then also let me get the, uh, or sorry, the ads team, I mean. Let me get the ads team moving. They got to optimize the ads. And then we started using the actual episodes as a pre-frame for the core offer, which is really cool. Um, so that, that's how they work together. The content feeds and fuels the webinar itself or any of your funnels. Okay, key takeaways here. Make a routine on your publishing. Get a system to repurpose. Match the content to the context of the platform. Syndicate and optimize. Remember the process is greater than talent. And if you're like, hey, uh, I don't have time to really make this big elaborate thing, then don't. It should not, that's my biggest fear of what I share on this stuff. I am a nerd on those things, right? Like don't think that that's what you have to go do in order to make this successful because you don't. Okay, uh, if you're like, hey, I'm a beginner on this, like make a very simple system. I'm gonna go for three platforms here and it's gonna be in this order. Who can I get to, who's an expert on this? Interview them, take the process down and now you have a model for every episode. 